While phylum Platyhelminthes does include a lot of not so great organisms, things that can cause you great bodily harm or death, and not just to humans, but to a lot of different organisms, there is one holdout in phylum Platyhelminthes, and that's class Tubellaria. Class Tubellaria is only filled with free living flatworms. And what we mean by free living is these are organisms that are not parasitic. They do not rely on another organism for reproduction, for food, or for really anything else that it needs. These guys are independent organisms that are living in the world, kind of doing their thing. But they are still flatworms, hence why they're part of Phy Phylum platyhelminthes. So this video is going to talk about two different organisms or groups of organisms that are kind of really cool in class tubularia. The first group is probably a group of organisms you've heard before, and that's planaria. And here's a picture of a common planarian, and maybe you've used these in your biology classes. They're pretty small, so maybe about the size of your fingernail. They're found in freshwater ecosystems, and honestly, they're pretty easy to reproduce and make a lot of, hence why they're really common in the science classroom. Now, planaria is not referring to a specific species. Planaria is just a general term for a lot of these organisms and includes hundreds of different species. It's like using the term big cats to refer to jaguars, lions, cheetahs, etc., even though there's individual species. So planaria is just a larger group of flatworms, and they pretty much all look like this. They look like small, little, dumb, and cute organisms. It's because of their eyes that they kind of get that look <laughs> to them. Now those aren't eyes like you and I think of it. They're kind of photosensitive receptors. It can help the planarian tell if it's in darker conditions or lighter conditions, but despite the fact that they look like eyes, they're not full eyes like you and I's eyes. Yeah. Anyway, the only cool thing is not just, oh, we can reproduce them and use them in class. They actually have a very unique feature to them, and that's their ability to regenerate. Now, there's actually a lot of organisms that can do regeneration, but what's unique about the planarian is that it can regenerate any part of its body from any part of its body. So this image is actually from an experiment, and let me kind of show you a little bit of what I mean by that. So typically when we think of regeneration and other organisms that can do it, if the head is still intact and another piece of the body is removed, then it's just going to grow back in this case kind of its tail region. Okay, but what's cool about planaria is if you have just the middle of the body, you cut off the head and you cut off the tail, in a week, you can start seeing the semblance of a regenerated head and tail. It can regenerate its head. That is not seen anywhere in the non-fictional animal kingdom. There are some fictional characters that can do that, but nothing in real life. The same is true if I just have the tail region. After a week, you start seeing the development of a head region. And if we gave it more time, you would see a fully fledged flatworm, a fully fledged planarian. Now, you might be able to understand why these get used a little bit more in science, because if we were to figure out how exactly they regenerate, we could apply that to humans, maybe. That research is pretty far away, but that's why planarian are so interesting. And they're very cheap. So you can do really cool research on a really cheap organism that one day might have huge implications for human health. The quick and dirty of kind of how planarians do this is their entire body is just chock full of stem cells. You and I essentially came from stem cells when we were literally just an egg, a fertilized egg. You had an egg from mom and a sperm from dad fertilized that egg. That essentially was a stem cell. A stem cell is more or less a cell that can turn into any other cell in the body. In humans, as adults, you have some stem cells that's in your bone marrow to create blood, but otherwise we don't really have stem cells. Planarians have tons of them, and so when they lose their head, 
they have these cells that can turn into any other cell and regenerate that missing head. So really cool applications of stem cell research and who knows where this will end up in the next 10, 20, 50 years and how it might impact human health. Now I mentioned before, there's two different groups of organisms I wanna talk about. So we're gonna call these the regenerators. That's the kind of group within tubularians. The other group of organisms I wanna talk about in class tubularia are these guys. Very beautiful multicolored flatworms. You see these a lot in more tropical areas. And this group of tubularians, I'm going to refer to as the penis fencers. Not every tubularian does this. Uh, it's only a couple of different species that do, but the actual species are really not that important. And you may be wondering, what in the world do I mean by penis fencing? So a lot of flatworms, not just in class tubularia, but among the other classes as well, are something called hermaphroditic, meaning that these organisms have both the abilities to create eggs and create sperm. So they have the male and female reproductive organs. So some flatworms, like one that's pictured here, they could self-fertilize, but it's still evolutionary advantaged to breed with another individual. And what they do is they penis fence to determine who is the dad or sperm donor and who is the mom or the one that's going to hold onto the eggs and help with the egg development. But being the mom kind of sucks because that means you really can't reproduce more. You kind of are stuck with the clutch you have. You have to get more food. You have to expend more energy to stay protected. And so it comes at an energetic cost to be the mom. And so what this species does is they use their penises to literally try to stab and inseminate the other before they get inseminated. So I wish I could describe this more in detail, but honestly, your best bet is to watch this video um, that really shows what in the world is going on. So it's gonna pop up here, but it's also gonna be in the comment section as well. And that video is gonna show you what does this actually look like. Kind of a fun fact, well, maybe not that fun. Um, this type of insemination is called traumatic insemination. As you can imagine, <laughs> they are trying to stab each other and that's a very traumatic thing. It can even lead to death. Uh, not ideal because again, we want reproduction to happen. So again, it's not every tubularian, but definitely an interesting group of species that are the penis fencing flatworms. So there you have